never stopped us from working together. Why should your differences with me stop you from embracing me as your brother? Even when you differ with me, you could listen to me politely. And I will listen to you politely. The end will come the same way it came in Egypt. The end will come when the son of Mary returns. And when the son of Mary returns, remember the most powerful voice in history. The most powerful voice in history ever to have declared that the son of Mary will one day return is the voice of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We know more about what's going to happen when he comes back. More than the Pope knows. The Pope essentially is always a white man, remember that. We know more about what's going to happen when the son of Mary returns than even the Pope knows. We know the truth will triumph. Let us end with this verse of the Quran. He it is who has sent his messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, sent him with the truth, sent him with a way of life based on truth, with the guidance, that it might prevail in the end. That it might prevail over all rivals. And Allah is sufficient as a witness of the truth of that end. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka enta samir alim wa tuba alina ya mulana inna ka enta tawab rahim. Barahmatika ya arhamu rahmin. Ameen. Zakala Khair Molana Sahib. A powerful presentation as usual, and all of us who have heard Molana before would know that he's touched on so many of the things that uh, he normally speaks about. But he's gone into much more than just the political and economic challenges of the modern age. I think Molana uh, seems to also have a degree in history. He remembers all these dates and events and things that happen, and you can't help but learn something from him when you hear him deliver a lecture. So much like with the presentation this morning, uh, we're going to devote some time to a question and answer session, uh, just about half an hour, inshallah. So we'd follow the same format of this morning. Brothers, if you have a question, you can uh, come forward close to the table in front here. There's the cordless mic passing around, and um, sisters as well. Or uh, you can write down your question and pass it to us. Uh, just when you're asking your question, if you can give us your name and let us know where you're from, inshallah. Ambassador Usman Ali, my colleague when I worked at the Foreign Service. Assalamu alaikum again. Um, alaikum really a great pleasure listening to you, Brother Imran. <clears throat> it makes me feel very proud, both from your academic uh, ec excellence and the quality of the Islamic knowledge. <clears throat> I, my question is a rather sim very simple, almost naive one. <clears throat> Why is it? <clears throat> in Muslim countries, or what is perceived as Muslim countries, there is squalid poverty, moral bankruptcy, poor governance, in spite of the fact of what we talk about, the Quran and the, uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. W what has gone wrong? What, I mean, w why is it, and how can we really mark it this, 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 uh, this religion. That's a problem. We are unable to market it. We are unable to, the, uh, the problem also that some of us can't communicate. You're an excellent communicator. I make a, we're talking, we are all Trinis here. I make this analogy. Maybe, maybe, you know in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the steel band. I feel it's an excellent instrument. It's not only carnival and jump up. It's a lovely instrument, fascinating instrument. 
I hope the visitors get a copy of a steel band tune and say and play, hear them play. Could you please? I, I'm making. My point. Are you? Are you? Are you the moderator? Are you the moderator, Mr. Chairman? I I seek your permission. I'm trying to make an analogy, which is in a comparison. That's the inter That's another thing. The intolerance of Muslims towards non-Muslims. The I was making a comparison that there's a good thing in the steel band, but we, we in Trinidad and Tobago, we are unable to market it. The same thing, we have an excellent thing in Islam, but we are unable to market it. This morning I was a Dr. Zakir, mm. and I was also listening to Jean Myers there. Mm. there. Are they mm. able to communicate and convince people? And that is one of the problems in Islam, mm. unable to market it. Mm -hmm. So hence the reason, in spite of the slight aberration on my right, mm -hmm. who is total intolerant, who come, I don't know if he come to hear something else, but I, I, I'll forego that. I mean, he, mm -hmm. uh, okay. right. it's not my fault, thank you. Yeah, okay, right. okay, okay Stanley Cook. All right. All right. We have, uh, perhaps what, what he was trying to tell you is we have a steel pan in Barakwa. And he's a, he's a professional musician. And he was beating the drums last night in Barakbo at the campfire. We need communicators. We need people who can market Islam. And I'm learning a lot of lessons from Tariq Ayub, the CEO of Muslim Channels TV of California, who made a tremendous sacrifice to come here today. And Tariq, we appreciate very much that you are here. He has these communication skills. We need people like Ashmeed. I told Ashmeed I'm going to keep him close to me now. Because he has, he has skills of management. Uh, we should have had him with us in the retreat from day one. But if, I'm going to give you an answer, but I'll be crucified. If we are in the state we are today, there are a number of reasons for it, but I'll single one. I consider it to be the most important reason of all. But first, let me seek from, some protection from Nabi Muhammad to protect me when they want to crucify me. He said, the hadith is in the Sunan of Tirmizi. It is narrated by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, it would not be long when nothing will remain of Islam but the name. I wonder who would be responsible for that collapse. He prophesied it. And nothing will remain of the Quran but the traces of the writing. I wonder who would be responsible for this betrayal of the Quran. You read it for the dead, but you would not go to the Quran that it can explain the world to you. At that time, the masajid would be grand structures. Iron and steel, multi-million dollar buildings. Ambassador Osman's father was an imam. I've never met a man like him. I have never in my life met a, met a man like his father, who'd ride a bicycle. Even through the rain, he'd drive it. He'd ride for hours to come to listen to a lecture on Islam, to learn with so much humility in that man, all through his life. Hmm? But today, grand structures, iron and steel, halabalo, masajiduhu ma'amilatun wahiya kharabu min al-huda. But the masajid are devoid of guidance. Now listen to the last piece, and you get your answer. Who is most responsible of all, for all the squalor, all the destitution, all the poverty, all the slavery? Ulama'uhum, the ulama, the religious scholars, the maulanas, the muftis, the shuyukh, of those people with those grand structures and so on. Sharrun nasa mimman tahta adim is sama. They would be the worst people beneath the sky. Why? I told you why. It's patake, patake, baker's man. That's why. 
You have 